Good evening, everybody. We'd like to welcome you this evening to the Board of Education meeting for the Enlarged City School District of Middletown for April 20th, 2017. My apologies for coming out a little bit late. Uh, the board had some uh, business to take care of in executive session. At this time, if you could please rise for our Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Perino. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you can remain standing, please, we have several moments of silence, first by Pastor Williams and then by Mr. Perino. Pastor. Uh, good evening, everybody. I uh, want to take a moment. I don't usually do uh, the moments of silence as Mr. Perino does, uh, but I wanted to take a moment to, uh, uh, to bring uh, into the thoughts and the uh, minds of everybody uh, two tragedies that we've had in the last uh, few weeks in this country. Uh, in my day job, I happen to travel across this world and across the nation and happen to be connected with a lot of people. Uh, personally, this kind of hits me because I was connected to uh, the young lady, the teacher, uh, that lost her life in uh, a terrible situation in San Bernardino, as well as uh, being friends with the daughters of Mr. Godwin, who lost his life in a terrible tragedy, terrible shooting, uh, that I'm sure we're all aware of in Cleveland. Uh, very, both very fine families, both very fine people. And I just wanted to take note of that tonight because this has affected uh, many people in a, in a bad way. But I do want to take note that, uh, take note that uh, in all of this, we must always be aware of what we do. We must always be aware of taking and saying a kind word to somebody, never knowing how that kind word might change their life, how that kind word might change the direction of somebody's life. And so I just want to remember uh, those two individuals this morning uh, in San Bernardino and uh, in Cleveland, uh, that, they, uh, that their families, and I want you to pray that their families uh, will be comforted in this time of tragedy, in this time of loss. And even in the families that were uh, a part of the other side of it, because everybody has lost in this. I take no joy in tragedy. I take no joy in death. But I do take joy in the strength of people when we come together even after tragedy. So let's just remember that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Bishop Williams. The moment of silence this evening is on a local level. Diana Elizabeth Randall. And Diana Elizabeth Randolph, she was known as Dee Dee, affectionately, worked in the high school attendance office for many, many years. Um, one of those individuals, when you first met her, you, you felt like you knew her for uh, a lifetime. Very, very well respected by staff and students. She was a proponent of good attendance by uh, the students. Um, she was an individual who participated in a number of community activities in addition to her regular job. So uh, the persons mentioned by Bishop Williams and D.D. Randolph, they most definitely will be missed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perino, and thank you, Pastor Williams. And now for the mission statement for the Large City School District of Middletown, Mr. President. We strive to provide fiscally sound educational opportunities in a safe environment that continuously supports our diverse student population. We will enable all students to graduate, to reach their full potential, to become lifelong learners, and to be competitive, productive members of society. Thank you, Mr. Crescenzo. Roll call, Mrs. Clark. Here. Here. Mr. Farina. Here. Mr. Pierre. Mr. Bison. Here. Pastor Williams. Here. I need a motion to approve this evening's agenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Ms. Tobiason. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. I need a motion to approve the regular minutes for April 6, 2017. 
Moved by Pastor Williams, seconded by Mrs. Blumenau. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Before we get to tonight's recognitions, announcements, and community reports, I need to take advantage of the fact that we actually have people at our meetings this evening. So uh, what's great about tonight is seeing all the young faces from our various school districts and some of the competitions that they took part of over the last year. And I'd like our parent to remind our parents that we have a very important budget vote coming up on May 16th that deals exactly for what we're here for this evening. Um, I, as a member of the Board of Education, nor can anybody at this t table tell you how to vote at a budget meeting. It's against the law to do that. Um, however, we want to encourage you to actually come out and vote on May 16th um, and, and try to support some of the uh, endeavors and the programs that our kids have uh, this evening. Later on, if you'd like to stay, um, our superintendent and our business official, Mr. Tuttle, will uh, be doing the uh, presentation for the budget for this year, and the board will adopt its budget for the 2017-2008 school year. So welcome this evening, and hopefully we'll see you at the polls on May 16th. We also have three board positions that are up. My position, Mr. McElroy, and Mr. Pierre's position are all available for the board. Um, if you contact the district clerk's office at 326-1196, Mrs. Clark can uh, fill you in on how to get petitions and run for the school board. You do have to collect 100 community member signatures uh, to be placed on the ballot, and I believe those petitions have to be in by April 26th. So time's running out. So at this time, our recognitions, announcements, and community reports, I'll hand it off to Mr. Del Mora. Thank you, Mr. Strider, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Eastwood, and Middletown School Community. At various Board of Education meetings throughout the year, we recognize achievements of students, um, accomplishments that they may have had on the field of competition, or um, showcasing their talents in the fields of fine arts uh, and other academic achievement awards. It's with great pleasure this evening and with exhilaration that we talk about another endeavor to showcase the academic and creative talents of our students. Not to say only about their perseverance, uh, about uh, painstakingly uh, taking a commitment beyond any average endeavor. We're very proud of each and every one of the teams of Odyssey of the Mind uh, that took place over uh, last month. And tonight we want to recognize, and I believe this is the first time in a long time that we're recognizing the students here, uh, as well as the coaches and parents, the support. Um, being involved with Odyssey of the Mind for a number of years, I know, personal, uh, much time it takes beyond the school day uh, and also on weekends and commitment of parents, as well as the coaches, well beyond, well beyond any stipend they may receive. It's a passion and a love for kids to see them uh, excel in areas that may not be um, so easily demonstrated in the classroom from day to day in the projects and activities. These type of competitions really expose children uh, beyond just the limits of our school district, um, statewide and hopefully at one day we'll go into national. We're very, very, very pleased and proud this year for the first time the Monhagen Odyssey of the Mind team went to state competition from the regional that takes place. <laughs> that takes place locally in our BOCES area at our Joseph BOCES. So I'm going to turn the rest of the evening to introduce all of the coaches um, and students from each team as well as our uh, special team this evening, Monhagen. Uh, I'm going to ask the coordinator of our program, uh, Ms. Linda Brott, to come up to the microphone. Uh, I also would like to make special recognition to the Middletown uh, Cares Coalition, who was very generous in donating all of the t-shirts um, that the students wore during the competition. So I think that's important to them to be recognized as well, as it's certainly a team event. And what we do also, if um, we're going to have certificates sent to the kids uh, later on after this event, so you're going to be getting a nice little certificate from the school district. And as we 
uh, announce each team. If we can have the kids come up, we'll take a picture so Mr. Wick can put it out on the website as well. Well, good evening, uh, President Estrada, Mr. Perino, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Eastwood, and members of the Middletown community. It's with great pride as the Middletown Odyssey of the Mind District Coordinator to welcome all of the uh, families here tonight and the students for their great achievements. This year we had a competition, Regional 5 competition, that occurred on March 4th over at OU BOCES, and uh, we had five teams teams actually from four buildings uh, here in Middletown compete in the region. We had William A. Carter, Presidential Park. Uh, from William A. Carter, there were actually two teams, uh, one from Presidential Park, Maple Hill, and also Monhagen Middle School. Uh, the tremendous amount of time that the coaches, the uh, teams, the families uh, put into this were tremendous, and we are so proud of each and every one of our schools, each and every one of our teams, and we cannot thank the families enough for their ongoing support, driving back and forth to practices on the weekends, and as Mr. Del Moro eloquently stated, all of the things in between. <laughs> so um, it's with great pleasure tonight, I'd just like to call up each building to uh, come up, as Mr. Estrada had mentioned, to actually have maybe the building administrator come up along with the coaches and the students uh, to be recognized and maybe to say just a brief word about your team and the accomplishment. Thank you. So we'll start with Presidential Park Elementary School. We'll have the kids um, start behind the podium, and as uh, Mrs. Short says your name, then you can come out here to the middle and we'll get a picture. Double checking everybody and who they are. <laughs> Alrighty, good evening everybody. It's great to be up here. Our team really worked very hard and uh, it was great to watch them in our library kind of evolve nearly every evening as they stayed here well past five o'clock uh, to become an awesome team. Um, I'd like to thank our coaches, Mildred Silva. <laughs> and Julie Nolan. Without these dedicated individuals, we wouldn't be able to have a team. So um, I really want to thank them. All right, so first up we have Morgan Cardinal. Gabrielle Toledo. Wyatt Granger. And Elijah Buell. And next, if we can have um, Ms. Kathy Jensen from William A. Carter and the students and the team.
can the William Carter coaches and students come up? I'm so pleased that we were able to have two teams this year so even more students could participate. We had a fourth grade team that was led by Ms. Jen Mathias and Ms. Jen Sicko. And we had a fifth grade team led by Ms. Hart and Ms. McCullough. <laughs> I'm blanking out. Jen, you want to come up and introduce your team? So unfortunately, uh, a lot of our members aren't here. We have two. Um, so we have Kennedy Moran and we have Emma Ackley for the fourth grade team. Emma, are you going to be okay? Liz, you want to come up and introduce your words? So for the members of our fifth grade team, we have Diani Soriano, Jaden Perez, Zastaza, Zastaza Sutherland, Shana Martin, and Valerie DelVal. And at this time, I'd like to have Ms. Amy Creedon, principal of Maple Hill Elementary School, come on up. And the Maple Hill students come on up as well. Good evening. It's my pleasure to introduce our energetic and creative coaching team um, of Vanessa Duddy, who was sick today and couldn't be here, um, Gloria Fisher, and Jessica Miller. Thank you. We had so much fun doing Odyssey of the Mind, and um, I really want to um, tell you that when we got up to uh, do our presentation that day, our music did not work. Our students were on edge. We were on edge, but they sang the songs instead, so they showed true perseverance, and we were so proud of them. And here tonight with us is uh, Jerry Rodriguez. Cameron Wiley, and Angelis Valdez.
And last but not least, Mr. Radonia and the team from Monhagen Middle School. Thank you. I'm going to ask that our parents come up also, please. If you don't mind, come on up. Once again, I'd just like to thank the Middle, Middletown Cares Coalition for the sweatshirts that you see here. Um, it was nice walking into the state-level competition, truly looking like a team, everybody in uniform, and that was really nice. So again, I just want to thank them one more time. This was truly an exciting adventure. Um, the, the only thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to introduce our coaches, who we're really proud of, as well as our kids. Um, I, I went to OU BOCES to watch the regional competition, and we were inside a classroom as that practice, the last practice before going out for the performance took place, and it was flawless, flawless. It was so great to watch, because the kids decided to choose the hardest problem that was available. And to watch them execute it flawlessly was fantastic. And when they went out to perform, it was not flawless. <laughs> Things went wrong. Things actually went wrong. And what the kids did that was so spectacular was they showed the ability, as Mr. Del Moro said, to persevere, to ad lib, to go off their script that they practiced so long, and to really fly by the seat of their pants a little bit and, and make it work. And they were so impressive that even though many things went wrong for them, they pulled it out and were able to still win. So we're so proud that they stuck with it. Um, that's how real life is. Not everything goes the way you want to, and you have to make the most of it, and they truly made the most of it. And that's a testament to not only our, our seven students, but our two coaches as well. So great job. I'm going to introduce to you Miss April Moran and Miss Allison Riley. So on behalf of my co-coach, Ms. Riley, and myself, we just wanted to take a moment to recognize the hard work of Monhagen Odyssey team that they put in this year. They were faced with a nearly impossible task. They had to build three cars that travel with three different propulsion systems that leave a three-layered parking garage that go in three different directions that perform three tasks that all meet in the same place. So just give them one more round of applause. Thank you. Um, we'd also like to thank Dr. Eastwood, Mr. Del Moro, the Board of Education, Mrs. Bratt, Mr. Redonia, Ms. Schreiner, the Middletown Cares Coalition, and all the parents behind me and that couldn't be here today for all their support this season. We really couldn't have done it without you guys traveling to states. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Monhagen's team. I have Joseph Mazza. I said it wrong. Joseph Mazza. No, I said it right. Ah. <laughs> Selma Zanidi. <laughs> Jalissa Ocasio. <laughs> Jimena Vicente. <laughs> Jenna Alexander. Mackenzie Bailey, and also Jade Fontanez, who couldn't be here this evening.
I do want to thank uh, Ms. Tobiason, who's been a big proponent of Odyssey of the Mind for our school district, and she every year mentions about the importance of uh, Odyssey of the Mind. And one of the reasons why I mentioned the budget vote earlier is because we did lose this program due to budget cuts um, a long time ago, and it's been... Um, We've made a lot of concerted efforts, and you guys have made a lot of improvement in making sure the program starts to revitalize itself and come back. But that can only happen is if we continue to have the programs in place. For the folks over at Monhagen, the kids, you're going to be going shortly over to a spectacular building at the high school. The construction project there will be finished by the time you guys get there, whether it's next year or the year thereafter. But I want to remind parents that the programs that are in place in this district are only as good as you taking advantage of them. If you do not take advantage of them, then you're going to leave the building without the ability to say, you know, you enjoyed what was there for you. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, and Dr. Eastwood mentions it at, at many of our meetings, you can leave Middletown High School and this school district with nearly 50, if not more than 50 college credits, which is a cost savings to your families as well. So please, as you're looking down the road and you're headed over to the high school, make sure you take advantage of every single program that's there for you to take advantage of, because you will leave this school district with a, a, a lot of abilities and a lot of um, support behind you that will make you successful in the future. So, Ms. Tobias? Yeah. Um, th this program was in existence, and then, um, as Mr. Estrada said, due to budget cuts, it was taken out. What I want to comment on is that the first year when they came back in, and I can't remember which team it was, but that team won the good sportsmanship. I don't know, as I said, which school. And to come in, what is it, six years, um, and end up at the state level is absolutely amazing because you have to look that the teams are again, once again in infancy because they start in elementary and then they have something to build on and grow to the middle school. We had nothing. We had to start from the very, very beginning. I can't tell you how proud. And I know when uh, Mr. Eastwood, uh, Dr. Eastwood and Mr. Del Moro mentioned, I know here at Presidential, the last two weeks, the kids were here every night until 6 o'clock. And prior to that, it was 5 o'clock. A lot of work, a lot of team effort. So I can say that this is a very proud moment for me to see the turnout and where we um, ended up this year. So just continue. Mr. Perino. I, again, congratulations to everyone in this room, the parents and, and all the students. Uh, just a couple of uh, uh, quick announcements. I see the people from Maple Hill out in force tonight, the PTO, and they do an excellent job. And tomorrow is your big tricky tray, am I correct? Starting at uh, 5 o'clock, doors open at 5 and calling starts at 7. Then not, we're not going to be back before the uh, Carter uh, tricky tray. And the Carter Tricky Trays on the 28th, same times, and they're all good. The PTOs do a tremendous amount of work, so I just want to say that while members of the PTOs and the staff are present this evening. We're looking forward to some nice Tricky Trays. Thank you very much. All good. So we want to thank you, and you, you're... By all means, we welcome you to stay for the remainder of the meeting, but I know you guys have a lot of things to do, and you're looking to get home to either do homework or do some other items. So don't feel like you have to stay. But thank you once again. We'll move on to the other recognitions, announcements, and community reports. We'll start off with uh, Mr. McElroy, if you have any. You good? Mr. Bison? Thank you. Pastor Williams. We'll move on to Mrs. Blumen now and come back to you. How's that? No? Mr. Casenzo? Um, <coughs> We're just going to take a minute here while we wait for 
the mass exodus. Okay, we're good, Mr. Crescenzo. Just don't do it at the table. Okay. All right. Um, I, this doesn't directly relate to the district, but in a way it does. Um, everyone's aware of the opioid crisis epidemic that is affecting every community in our, in our country. And um, it's hit particularly hard here in Orange County. Uh, my wife, Lori Lombach Crescenzo, is a, among other things, a drug and alcohol counselor at the Cornerstone Family <coughs> Health Care Center for Recovery. And this will be the second year uh, she produced and directed this presentation. It's called Nonfiction Addiction, True Stories of Addiction. Um, and nine of her clients wrote a monologue about their life, about how, where they started, how their life has progressed and how they've gotten to here, all the very, very highs and mostly very, very lows. And um, it's a very moving experience to listen to this because it's written from the heart, from, from gut level. Um, and what I got, I'm actually one of the presenters, um, but what I got out of this is basically the indomitable human spirit that um, the will to survive. I mean, there were a lot of failures along the way. But it's worth seeing. It's going to be at uh, Mount St. Mary College this coming Wednesday from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and it's free. And I encourage, especially educators, um, anybody dealing with a population that's susceptible to this um, epidemic, it's very, very worthwhile. And like I said, it's at Mount St. Mary College this Wednesday at the Aquinas Hall Theater from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crescenzo. Uh, did you have anything, Pastor Williams, that you wanted to touch on? Uh, just real quickly, uh, first I want to say how grateful I am that this place just emptied out at this stage of the budget season. Uh, very grateful. The last couple of years we haven't had that luxury. So, uh, so I'm very happy about that to look at all these empty seats. Uh, that's kind of a twist, uh, kind of a different look at it from a pastor's point of view because I don't like to see empty seats in the church on Sunday morning. But I'm glad to see empty seats here at this stage of the budget season. Um, also, <laughs> also to tie in with what uh, I'll get them out to vote and get them out to church on Sunday. But uh, <laughs> uh, also, just uh, just kind of uh, along the lines of what uh, Mr. Crescenzo uh, was just talking about, uh, uh, I have been in uh, several meetings with uh, Town of Walk Hill, uh, and I'm not I'm not taking any thunder from uh, our representatives for Town of Walk Hill, but I went not as a school board member, but uh, as a, as a pastor here in the city. Um, and there is a new program with the, all the opiate uh, the epidemic that's going on and the heroin epidemic. Uh, there's a new program in the town of Walk Hill called Walk Hill Cares, uh, which is a wonderful program uh, that uh, is a no judgment zone. If you have a family member, if you have somebody that is in a, in a uh, predicament that is uh, addicted, uh, that is having an issue, this is a, an opportunity to get them help without any judgment, an opportunity to expedite uh, expedite uh, the avenue of going into treatment. And so I had the opportunity to sit down with uh, Chief Hurtman, uh, Gertman Hurtman, judge, judge uh, put that on my memory. I didn't have my ginkgo today. Uh, but, uh, uh, and, and also with uh, a couple other of the uh, town representatives and so, but it's a great program, and I, and I think that with uh, the opiate epidemic that's going on, uh, we here in the city need to be aware that it's not just affecting adults, but it's also affecting kids. It's affecting, it's affecting young people. So anybody that you come across that needs help, I, I keep, I keep uh, one of the Narcon kits in, um, in several different places. Um, yeah, it, one in my briefcase, one in my home, uh, even though you're not supposed to, I do keep one in my car because I'm in my car all the time. Uh, but 
I think it's very important for us to, to, to be aware that this epidemic is real. So uh, kudos to Town of Walk Hill for ha having this program in place that will be able to help uh, not put people in jail, but help people get treatment. Uh, so I'm done. Thank you. Mr. Prina, all yours. <laughs> no, whoa, not long tonight. Thank you very much, uh, President Estrada. Uh, we mentioned a couple of the events coming up. Another event this Saturday is a Middletown cleanup, and I see Mr. Witt in the audience, and he's been uh, a community liaison. I know he's been uh, uh, recruiting a number of our groups to participate in that. The honor societies from various buildings, Andrew OTC, Middletown, uh, Middletown Youth Council, Middletown Athletes Cares. How many have I missed, Kevin? You could have as many as 300 kids there. Wow. And there's going to be staff as well. I know you've been working very hard on that, so uh, congratulations uh, on that. Uh, just continuing, I know two of our seniors this morning were honored at the Cools Athletic, uh, at the, athlete, the banquet at Cools for being scholar-athletes, uh, senior Susan Chang and Matthew Guattari, selected by the Orange County and the Scholastic Athletic Association. Susan has a 99.53 GPA, sport is tennis. Matthew, 100.28 100 GPA cross-country, indoor track, and lacrosse. And I know they're both very much involved in the Supra uh, courses. Um, shout out to the NJROTC, Middletown Youth Council, and Middletown Athlete Cares, who assisted in uh, making the Easter egg hunt, Middletown Parks and Recreation Commission program, a success on uh, April 15th. So. Uh, it was a good job. Uh, we specifically banned Rose from the event because we're afraid she'd eat all the chocolate bunnies, sneak in. But uh, at any rate, uh, the student, the kids went away very happy uh, for this event. And the Lions Club, by the way, supplied the uh, the chocolate bunnies for the event. It was Chris Brinkerhoff, Kelly Ocasio, and she was here tonight. Her daughter was in the. Um, was one of the uh, recipients of the um, honors uh, of the uh, Manhagen, I believe, Manhagen um, Honor Society, and the uh, so. Congratulations to everybody on that. And uh, finally, I'm still getting positive comments on the the performance of Greece at the Middletown High School. I received a note from. Uh, the senior citizens, uh, Mulberry House and Middletown Golden Age. I'm going to just read a portion of this. We all Golden Age seniors enjoyed a very pleasant Thursday afternoon. And we congratulate everyone in the performance. It's so nice to be entertained this way. Our thoughts of the day was and continues to be grateful to uh, have this opportunity. So, and then they thank us. And by the way, the superintendent, members of the administration, will be going to the seniors on May 4th to speak about the uh, budget. So, congratulations to everyone involved in this evening's program. I'm done. It was nice and short. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prina. Um, just a couple of reminders uh, that. Uh, be aware of a lot of our student athletes who are out and about. Um, I saw some of the track team running along our roads. Um, it was actually real nice to see over at the high school. We had a baseball game, a softball game, and I think a track event going on at the same time. So literally hundreds of kids um, out and about. So please be aware of them on the roads. Um, uh, in addition, I also have, I, I think I mentioned this at the last meeting, but just in case um, I did not, um, our own Dr. Eastwood is being given the 2017 Educational Leadership Award by the Mid-Hudson School Study Council. It'll be at an event at Anthony's Pier 9 next Thursday, April 27th from uh, 6 to 9 o'clock. So congratulations, Dr. Eastwood. Thank you. Um, for that as well. And Mr. Casanzo, you had something else? 
I don't know if we're going to have a uh, roundtable tonight, but I have a question. Will there be a Meet the Candidates uh, forum? Good question, and thank you for um, leading me. We'll try to put one together because I think it's important, and um, we'll try to put one together. Okay? Yep, absolutely. Um, I, I just want to remind uh, the community, too, uh, because there's been some misunderstandings or uh, questions about the fact that this summer, as we've repeatedly said over the last year, uh, there will be no activities um, on our school properties this summer, and that has to do with all of the construction that's going on. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that, um, although they may have heard that the school district is not allowing those activities, the that, that is a true statement because we do have all the construction that's going on and we don't want anybody to get hurt. Uh, additionally, we've been notifying entities that use our facilities during the year and especially during the summertime. Uh, we've been notifying them for well over a year now that we would not be allowing the use of our facilities because of all the construction going on. So this is nothing that the school district suddenly decided to do or stop. That is not the case. Please understand, we've had these plans in place for two years and we've been notifying entities over at least a year now, last summer and beyond, that they would not be able to use our facilities because of all the construction at all of our sites. So please understand that. Yes, we are not allowing it because of construction to improve our facilities and because it would not be safe to have all the students um, activities on our facilities. But we did notify well in a year in advance of all those activities, a year ago now, that they would not be able to use our facilities and to please make other plans for the use of the um, other additional uh, facilities to keep those programs going. All right, so thank you very much. And just uh, in addition to that, the safety issue is also the fact that that's the prime time for construction to get completed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it puts je uh, the school year for next year in jeopardy uh, to start on time. So um, we try to make sure that construction does not occur during uh, a lot of the important times when uh, programs are being taught. So, But Dr. Eastwood, that's not to say that there won't be summer school. Well, that's correct. We'll have summer school uh, as scheduled. Um, we've made uh, plans for that. Um, it's just the rest of the facilities um, and the grounds, too, because a lot of our school grounds will be under construction or um, in, in, at work being done on them as well. But even, the, even summer school, we adjusted right. to make it work, right. but even summer school yes. was affected by the construction. Correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. One other thing. Mr. Perino. Yeah, just one other thing. I was going to save this until the next meeting, uh, but since uh, President Estrada congratulated um, Dr. Eastwood, I want to congratulate uh, Mrs. Linda Knapp, who's not here this evening. Her picture appeared on the front page of the Middletown Times Herald Record, and she played a very significant role in. Orange Regional Medical Center receiving three national honors. She has a supervisor's role in the cardiac rehabilitation unit. And uh, if you're not, if, if you don't know Mrs. Knapp too well, the people who may have moved here recently, uh, she is the driving force behind the concession stand. In fact, this concession stand is called the Linda A. Knapp concession stand. She not only there for the events, but she prepares the concession stand, which takes a lot of time. And something else, she is a big participant in the uh, the program, No Kid Hungry program, the Lions Club program, donating food. So she does a lot behind the scenes, Linda. I'm glad she's gotten this recognition. Great so, job, Linda. She's not here. I was going to save it, but I thought I'd do it while the... I understand at the next meeting she'll be here and she'll be autographing anybody that brings mm -hmm. in the front covers of the newspaper. She'll be doing that for free. <laughs>
Okay, we're going to move you. on to our first opportunity to the, address the board for the public. For those who would like to address the board, you can come up to the podium. Uh, we do have a sign-in sheet. You have four minutes. Um, there is no dialogue between board members and members of the public. It's our opportunity to sit back and listen to what our community has to say. So are there any takers this evening? How are you, Mr. Warren? Good evening, Mr. Estrada. Stay around later. I might have a job for you. Okay. <laughs> Since you missed this, I figured I'd pick up on it. Um, polling places, for those who are watching at home, um, for the vote are Truman Moon, Presidential Park, Twin Towers, and the high school, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., correct? Um, if you don't know where your polling place is or where you usually or you should vote, you can call Mrs. Clark, 326-1196. Um, if you're happy with your child's education and all the opportunities provided to them by this district, I urge you to vote yes for the budget. Um, feels nice that you're able to say that this year. Yeah, right? I had to keep that inside for years when I was sitting up there. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to say vote yes um, because um, you're – and this was a perfect example before you all pointed it out. That's one program here that's available to the students. There's so many – there's so many opportunities for um, the students to leave here with um, such a good education. My children took advantage of it. There's opportunities in so many different areas, too – science, STEM, the arts. So all of that stuff, if, if you love the program that, programs that your children are able to take advantage of here, please, I urge you to vote yes on May 16th. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Mr. you all for, for everything. And I'm so happy that, like Pastor Williams said before, there's the room emptied out. How many years? Uh, I don't even know when the last time was when the, the budget wasn't a big concern. And, and, they, and they left before the good news that Dr. Eastwood's going to give us in a little bit. So. Oh, good. Yeah. So, um, so congratulations to all of you, all the hard work of the administration for um, your proper or, or good prognostication about what you thought would happen, because it turned out pretty close to what you thought it would be. So that's great. Thanks to our legislators and the governor for, for finally um, bringing forth the budget, late though it may be, but we'd, who's going to complain about that it's late when at least you have a good budget to work from? Yep. So, Thank you. Congratulations and thank you for all of the – thank the administration for the hard work and thank you, board members, for, you, for your community service. Thank you. Would, would anybody else like to address the board at this time? Seeing none, moving on. Any letters, Mrs. Clark? No letters? Uh, does anyone have any issues – and doing any of the all the personnel memorandums together? No? So I need a motion to approve personnel memorandum 21A, administrative, 21B, instructional, 21C, non-instructional, 21D, instructional, and 21E, non-instructional. So moved. Moved by Pastor Williams, seconded by Mr. Perino. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Introduction of personnel. Mr. Delmora. Yes, we do have one uh, introduction this evening. I'm very proud and pleased to announce um, a special education teacher, Ms. Danielle Imperato. I'd like to invite her up to the microphone with the instructional leader, Mr. Norville. Come on in, Connell. Come on up. Uh, this is a special education English teacher at the high school, and uh, it's with great pleasure and honor, and we're very fortunate to have someone uh, with her expertise. Mr. Estrada, members of the board, Dr. Eastwood, Mr. Delmore, Mr. Tuttle, members of the Middletown community, in a night when we celebrate our students and we look at their achievement and we're excited about it, it reminds us exactly that we have a strong 
teaching staff. And and it really takes work to to develop and to hire and to get that quality of staff. So it's really important when we recognize talent and um, and invite them into our district and 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 come in to do such an outstanding job. And having said that, it's really exciting for me to introduce to you um, Miss Embarada. And Miss Embarada comes highly recommended. Um, and she also comes with a master's degree from um, St. Thomas Aquinas College, um, with very high GPA. But she's also just really excited, enthusiastic, and, um, and she has a real passion for students. So having said that, I want to welcome Ms. Umbarada to the Midi family, um, Midi Pride, and, um, and, and wish her all the best. Please join me as I invite her to the podium. Thank you. I just wanted to take a chance to thank the board, Dr. Eastwood, Mr. Del Moro, for giving me this great opportunity to join what a wonderful school community of high achievement. I had no idea what I was walking into, and I'm very impressed and very enthusiastic to be here. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome on board. Welcome. Welcome to the Mitty family. Uh, next up, our superintendent's report and our budget adoption overview. Mr. Tuttle and Dr. Eastwood. Good evening. Um, before we start the um, budget presentation, I want to talk about um, a couple of things that have been uh, brought up to my attention over the last few months relative to uh, our budget for next year and concerns um, about the budget uh, from parents and uh, other community members. And I think it is important that the presentation that you're going to see today um, offers no degradation in program quality or types of programs in our school district. And I think that's important to talk about because one of the concerns from a number of parents uh, are, especially those at the elementary and middle school level, is a concern of losing the quality and the large number of programs that are available to students inside this district. And you saw one this evening, uh, which is a perfect example of that. Um, but hidden inside um, our school program listing is a variety of programs that range from kindergarten programs all the way up to um, high school where we offer 103 credit opportunities in a variety of uh, different college courses from three different universities. And the thing about that that makes our school district unique, and I think this is important, I will tell you that many parents of younger students know this very well, is that those college courses are offered in this district for free. And I know that there's big discussions about this issue across the state, uh, in the state budget this year, but the long and short of it is, if you're really going to make students graduate college and career ready, the college part of that is that you give them experiences that when they leave our school district and begin to take experiences at college, that they feel secure and competent enough to finish their degree programs. Oftentimes that's not spoken about. We talk about college and career ready, and so many kids graduate and go to college. But if you study the statistics about students in college, there's a large portion of them that do not finish because they truly weren't ready for the college level rigor and experience of being independent around their learning. We give that here. Five years ago, only 6% of the graduating class 
graduated with college courses. Since instituting free college courses and expanding those opportunities, this year's graduating class will see 36% of our graduates walk across the stage having had college level experiences. That speaks very well for this district. Why? More than half of those kids that have taken or will have taken college credits by the time they graduate next month, more than half of them come from homes of poverty. And if it were not for these types of opportunities, would not have had those experiences that open all types of doors to further education. This community supported that. It stands behind it. And parents continue to talk about those opportunities being available to their children, even as elementary level. In this proposal that we're going to present tonight, none of those programs will be eliminated or decreased in their capacity. None of them. So what are the economics around a program like that and an offering in this district like that? Not only do you break through or smash through that glass ceiling of not having the funds available to have access to those programs, so at a high school level, you can leverage the support of a different type of caring environment from staff members to help students get through those experiences successfully but it offers an economic benefit to the family as well. Because many of these kids have come back and their parents have told us that because of those opportunities, they've entered college in advanced standing. And in many cases, two years in advance. Now, if you're going to one of the colleges, let's say that we offer these programs in, RIT, Syracuse University, or Stevenson, those tuition costs could be in anywhere from $45,000 to $65,000 a year. So if you've taken advantage and leveraged the courses and programs in the high school, think of the savings to you, both as a parent and as a student, in debt after we get out of college, being lowered significantly, if not eliminated in many instances. But most importantly is the opportunities we've given every one of our students, regardless of their background and their financial situation, opportunities to be college successful, college ready. And we do the same on career aspects as well. So I do want to emphasize, there are no eliminations of programs, no eliminations of staff. And every one of the programs that we've had in place and put in place to value the education of all of our students, regardless of their financial or other situations, to be successful in our school district, are still in place. So here's the other piece of this, because we have some criticism of um, costs per pupils across the state. And many of those are misnomers. Sure, the state has the highest cost per pupil in the country. But nobody wants to understand why that is, and in most cases, has nothing to do with local school districts. It really doesn't. And how do we demonstrate that, a school like ours? If you look at all the programming that we have in this school district for our kids, think about everything I just talked about, kindergarten through 12th grade, the facilities, the extracurricular activities. We do that less per pupil than the state average. 
But nobody wants to talk about that outside, do they? Because it doesn't fit the message that they're trying to communicate. You can educate kids well. They can succeed. And you can do it economically efficient, as we do, less per pupil than the state average. If you look at similar districts in ours, it's close to $1,000 less per pupil, similar, similar districts. So we do offer great programs at a great price. And I want to keep reminding folks of that. I will say that the budget this year, given everything that had happened to us, from a state aid perspective of what the dollar amount was that was being stated by the governor, and then being faced with some huge, huge interest, our premium rates in health insurance, you might remember that Mike was talking about a potential deficit our deficit actually at that time in the estimates that we were looking at of almost six million dollars. I am here to say today, thank you to Mike and the rest of our staff, that we have no gap. And I'm about to show you what that, how we were able to eliminate that gap. One, by projecting out properly and, and this is kind of a sad thing for me because um, I think that was mentioned earlier. We were very close to the targets of where we thought state aid would come in uh, about a month ago. We hit those targets, actually exceeded them because the state was very kind to us this year uh, once again relative to um, meeting some of the needs that we have financially. So that helped us a lot in closing that $6 million gap. The second was insurance. And I have to applaud this Board of Education because this Board of Education didn't stay in status quo and say, oh, well, we have no other options that sit in front of us. Therefore, we'll cut staff because of that. And we pursued those thinking options, I will call them. What else can we do? And we had to look no further than next door at Minnesink Valley, who went to a self-funded system. And in investigating that, you'll notice that we saved a significant amount of money, or will be saving a significant amount of money, based on projections and costs of new premiums for us. Without losing benefits. I want to stress that. Without losing benefits. So besides the programs that we have here and the concern that we have for our staff to make sure that uh, we take care of them from a health perspective um, and look for options, we've been able to close that $6 million gap and by the way, make a recommendation to this board tonight to reduce the tax levy from that maximum amount. So Mike, we want to go through that? So we had two options or two options that we'll present to the Board of Education tonight. One is, as you remember at the last Board of Education meeting, um, there were projections of how we were going to use any additional funds uh, that would come in from state aid and also any savings from health insurance. In addition to that, we said that we would um, look at our budget and trim uh, all budget lines in order to save some monies as well. There we were looking at a savings in our health insurance uh, of $3.61 million. This is, this is important. Think about if we didn't look for other options we would be up here having a different story tonight. A story about program cuts, about staff cuts, rather than look at other ways of managing our school system. Well, so that was one that was put up. Um, we're hitting that mark. A additional budget um, 
reductions of $459,000 because of the additional state aid that came in. And as it says up there, we did look at uh, over what we projected, um, $2.2 million in additional funds. Uh, and then there were some additional revenues of $119,000. Go to the next slide. So on option A, we're looking, uh, there's two important things is we're, our budget stays the same, 180 056810 but the tax cap would stay at 3.9%. All right, so let's look at option B. In option B, the same savings from our health insurance, 3.461, but additional budget reductions over the 500,000 um, that, remember we talked to, both, to the board about uh, a little over uh, 1 million in um, cuts to the lines. Uh, we're recommending instead of option A, option B, going back in and trimming without any losses of programs. We have studied this budget in detail for the last couple of weeks. We absolutely believe that we could reduce our budget, um, budget lines by a million dollars with absolutely no programmatic or service cost reductions or reductions. The same aid in state revenue and the same in additional revenues. What does that mean though, which is very interesting than point uh, option B, remember the only difference is the additional uh, budget reductions inside our budget of a million versus a half a million. <clears throat> that translates into, let me go to the next slide. Instead of 3.9 tax cap going down to 3.15, this is, what we would be recommending is B. Understanding that when we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a full tax cap increase. That was because when we further studied our budget in detail again, we absolutely believe that we can make up that million dollar uh, cut, again, at no loss in programs or services. and offer our taxpayers a reduction um, down to from 3.9 to 315 percent. So those are two options that we have. We're recommending option B um, to the Board of Education, um, understanding that they also, the other option would be to stay where we had rec made recommendations at the last Board of Education meeting. Next slide. As you can see here, option A and B in summary, um, basically a tax cap of 3.9. Um, option B shows a budget of 179516780 instead of the 180 in option A because we're going back and reducing uh, the budget lines by another $540,000 <clears> without reducing services or programs and also then reduc reducing the tax cap increase from 3.9 to 3.15 or a 0.75, three quarters of a point uh, reduction in the tax levy. Any questions? Um, we'll go around the table. Just one uh, thing. I think, and I, uh, Mr. John Morris said he had mentioned it earlier too, that when we put this out for the website that it should probably read tax levy percent increase, not tax cap percentage increase? Yeah. Because uh, those are kind of two different, the tax cap and the tax levy are two different things. Yeah. You know I, what I, mean? I don't want well, people to confuse one for the other. It's a, yeah, all right, no problem. I'm just saying. Uh, no, I, what I, I agree in the technicality of that. The reason why we use tax cap is because that's the nomenclature out there. So people understand it that way, that the tax cap is X. So absolutely, we can um, do the, the technical language of that rather than the nomenclature. I mean, maybe general. what we can do so it shows that there is that we're coming right. in at a difference is say our tax cap, our eligible tax cap is 3.9. Right. Our tax levy increase mm -hmm. is 3.15. So people know what the cap is and that we didn't go up to the cap. We're actually going in lower than the cap. Right. Just my suggestion. Pastor Williams, any questions? Option A or option B? B? 
Mrs. Blumenau, any questions? No. Option A or option B? Mr. Cosenzo. I don't have any questions, but you did a remarkable job on this budget. I appreciate that. Thank you very Thanks. much. Um, option B. Okay. Mr. McElroy. If um, we had adopt either a proposal, we're obviously accepting as a fait accompli that <clears throat> we're changing insurance. Correct. And do, do we know at this time what um, network of doctors we're going to be going with? What, what we can say right now, the way that we've been pushing this out is that there would be no changes in coverage. Um, and there's a high percentage of chance that we would be staying with the same provider that we have now. So the blue would be the blue. So there, the change the card. The, the only difference, and this is important, is that because of the bylaws of the consortium, we cannot leave till October 1st. And there's another point, thank you very much to the Board of Education for taking a leap of faith, getting out there April 1st and saying, notifying them that we're going to leave because now um, our liability inside the organization, the, the consortium, is only three months after July 1st. But there will be that three-month system where, or t I mean time frame, where employees will be under the consortium, under the consortium's new, new uh, benefit structure until uh, October 1st when we get back to our self-funded program and go back to where we are today as a benefit level. So because we're in that consortium and we're locked in for three months, there'll be a three-month period where they'll be under the consortium's changes um, in benefits, which is increases in um, co-pays, uh, pretty much that's prescriptions. Um, but once we hit that October, we go back with the benefit levels we're at today. Uh, benefit structure has to be communicated to mm -hmm. all of its members by when? Well, once once we adopt that change, which hopefully will be in the next month, we'll begin a communications campaign to make sure that folks know how this is all going to play out and what these changes will be in those yeah. kinds of things. That's about ours, but it's the consortium's responsibility the existing consortium's responsibility right. to notify its members of any changes that are going to take effect between July 1st right. and our members October 1st, correct? I, I would assume that that's the if case. If they're going to change co-pays and stuff, they have the consortium, right. not us. Well, the, the, technically, again, that is true, but I still think because of our situation, we have a double or triple correct. requirement to make sure that our employees understand what will happen July 1st, and then what will happen again in October 1st. We have, we have to go on a, a communication campaign for our employees to make sure that they understand there's going to be this blip for three months, and then we're back to the level that they're at, used to right at this point. Mr. McElroy, continued. We'll go, we'll go around. Uh, let me just... Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I know you will communicate, I think you said that, you'll communicate this out to all the employees, anybody covered by this plan. Um, will that, that will include the retirees also? Yes. And would they be part, will, will you have any, um, like, uh, in-service here that they would come fit, and the yes. retirees would be included in that? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Good question, Mr. President. We're actually going to try to work with um, a communications programming experts up at the Capital Region uh, BOCES to help us with the whole campaign around communicating to our staff and Smackle. retirees. I, I, I just include retirees in our staff. Yeah. Mr. Uh, McElroy? Good point to bring up. So thank you for that. And um, so at, at some point in the future, then the board will vote on actually going to a self insured plan yes. and selecting. 
you know, whatever network it may happen to be. Correct. Okay. Um, and then, Mr. Estrada, t yeah, typically the health insurance plan notifies its members of changes. By in a certain time, too, right? Mm -hmm. They have to be. Yeah, I don't know what the technical by the book, like, thing is, but, um, like, we usually get something in advance of the July 1 changes, yeah, and there'll be new insurance cards and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, which for our employees will and retirees will only be a three-month yeah. kind of thing. Um, and I think, you know, what Dr. Eastwood said made a lot of sense, and, you know, that we have to do a really good job of informing people so that they know that come July 1 that those changes are uh, temporary and not because of us. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and additionally, um, we, we want to make sure that the transition is as smooth as possible. Right. And fortunately for us, the initial um, offers that are coming in uh, are almost identical in, in both program and also company. So we're trying to make sure that gets as close as possible to what they're experiencing now, so the difference is nothing more than a new cart. Right, uh, that, and that's where I would be, because you referenced Minisync, and they, um, you know, are self-insured now, and they st stuck with the same network of doctors, and uh, because my wife works in Minisync, I have transitioned to that plan, and for us, it was a seamless transition, right. which, um, you know, relieves a lot of anxiety, and I've mentioned several times, right. you know, that, that concern, and that's been my I think largest concern. I don't doubt that there's going to be some nuances that will be unique to individuals, Can't but those will be on an individual basis and will But heck, there are going to be quickly. nuances with the consortium mm -hmm. plan after sure. January, uh, July 1st anyway, too, yeah. because of their new structure. Yeah, okay. um, yeah and I, I guess I would uh, you know, be inclined to support option B. Thank you, Mr. McElroy. Um, does, our, does that include dental, by the way, or is that a totally it's different no, monster? Okay. Mr. Bison? Well, first of all, I just want to say... That's not um, to say that we're dropping that. I don't want to... We're not no, I just wanted to know no, I just, But somebody may misconstrue that. Yeah. The answer is no. <laughs> just just think of it this way. Sorry. All things being equal are still equal. That's new math. That's common. Yeah, it's common core. Mr. Bison. I just want to say a phenomenal job, um, especially with the tax rate and or I shouldn't say the tax rate because tax it's levy. not, yeah. yes, it's not the tax rate yet, the tax levy, um, and taking into consideration, you know, the economy and especially the economy of um, many of the residents here in Middletown. Um, and I also have to say I had a lot of apprehension about moving away from my secure, you know, the security blanket of um, the health care um, program that we did have, but I couldn't buy into the amount of money that the increase was reflected in the budget. So um, I commend you for your advice to the board to um, have um, an investigation into this. Um, again, I'm a little nervous, I guess, about making a switch, but um, I have to go on your leadership and, and what you've done for this community and this district, and I put faith in, in the decision. So thank you, and I go for option B. Thank you, President Estrada. You know, we're familiar mostly with what we're doing with the health insurance, but the information has to be, and I'm sure we're going to do this, very clearly communicated not only to the staff but to the retirees, our retirees in the district. Mm -hmm. And it also has to, especially since that we will still be involved with the consortium for a while mm -hmm. because if benefits change, I'm positive I will be getting calls. Well, look, uh, we're in the new health plan now. now mm -hmm. My, my uh, co-pays have gone up. If, if that's going to happen, my prescriptions has gone up on, on, on. So, uh, again... Uh, the, the retirees are pretty much out of the loop on this right now, so it's important somehow we give them a heads up what we're doing, when we're doing it. So that's it, one. It, it almost might benefit, and I don't know how the planning is, 
almost might benefit us to officially vote here on a change after July 1st because that way if you don't if you vote on it in May or June and then an increase happens in July people some people aren't going to make the connection and they might get confused and say oh they yeah. even though we're not switching till October 1st mentally they'll say oh wait a minute your switch has something to do with this July 1st thing even though it doesn't but you know it is what it is and the uh, the thank you the other point is I, I'm glad we're, uh, we're giving back a bit to the taxpayers here because while it might not be important to some people who earn a, a, a salary of uh, merit, so to speak, uh, many people this will really benefit. I know you've been working on this budget since probably October, correct? Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy job, and I want to commend you, your administrative staff, the department heads, and the staff. Mr. Tuttle, you've done a good job on your first go-around with this. And uh, so thank you. And my option is option B. Uh, well, I want to first say thank you, Mr. Tuttle, for your first uh, go-around. I know it, there was a lot of angst and anxiety um, throughout different parts of the process. And Dr. Eastwood, for those amazing estimates that you gave us a couple of weeks ago that came in perfectly in line with uh, what uh, the state budget ended up coming in There's on. There's an upside to that and a downside. The upside is um, we were very conservative and we, did, we were very fortunate. The downside is I think I've been around too long because my projections are too close. So... <laughs> Just to give it as your expertise amongst the legislature. And uh, the only comment I would say is that um, my concern is, and I'm sure you guys have already taken this into account in, in the million dollar um, additional budget reduction, is um, post high school construction. Um, as far as, obviously we've added square footage to the location and that obviously means more security guards and or cameras that we may need to hire for that additional space to address the population over at the high school. But I, 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 that's probably a different conversation. Well, just remember that in previous boards of education meetings, we've actually added staff, like I want to say maybe about a month and a half, two months ago, maybe, yeah, two, about a month ago um, in, in the, um, support for custodians and other types of support inside uh, the high school we uh, brought to the Board of Education and anticipated that actually uh, in this current year's obligations. So uh, we just didn't act on them at that time, but they will be there. So the Board did support that. The issue around security monitors, we still have to have a conversation on because we have to, once a building is operational, that's when we want to study the flow of students and traffic in that building to make sure that we're not um, hiring inappropriate numbers and types of staff to make sure that the building is safe and appropriate. Because there's going to be a large building with different structures. And we had a meeting today where we talked about the scheduling issues and the implications of the scheduling issue for next year to make sure that um, we're looking at the building in different ways rather than have kids constantly move between a large of the two ends and try to do it in four minutes uh, because that's not going to work. We have to make sure that we look at the building structure now and plan around having as the, the least amount of transition time and space that we can be between classes and programs. Thank you. Any other additional questions? No additional questions? Thank you. Okay. I just want to um, end on the comment. Um, this, this is a true statement in the sense that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, about taking a chance on looking at options for health care. We've done that programmatically in the past. And just, just remember a couple of years ago when we talked about no social promotion. And that was a big piece for the board to bite off. But what happened was, 
in the first year, as we made adjustments programmatically in two-year K and midpoints and those types of things as a result of that, you can see the actual byproduct in a positive way now. But once again, it goes back to this Board of Education willing to look at options to solve problems. And you've done it. The district is, and the kids are benefiting greatly by looking at operating instruction in different ways. So I want to I want to thank you for that. Relative to the health insurance, nobody should take our experience and our decisions today and replicate it across any other school district because every school district has different types of problems. So just because other school districts may not follow the decision making and thinking that we do does not mean that it's not appropriate for them because their unique needs will drive their decision making. And the school districts in our area, we're very fortunate, are they all have high productivity and they're doing extremely well. So don't take our experience and decisions today if you're out there and say, well, why isn't X doing it? That's because X is different. And their needs and, and the way that they operate are different. And simply replicating what we're doing here tonight to make decisions that are appropriate for us does not mean it works in other districts. So these decisions are unique to us and the benefits are unique to us. And it really should stay on an individual district level than the assumption of everybody should do y, X and Y. Or, that doesn't work for people. It doesn't work for school districts. And once school districts start doing cut or cookie cutter programming, we all know that that doesn't work. So thank you for sticking with us and giving the opportunities for us to think outside the box. I think it's benefited the community and also our kids and programs. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, so at this time, I'd like the following, a motion for the following resolution to adopt the 2017-18 budget resolution as presented. Be it resolved, the board hereby adopts the proposed district budget for the 2017-18 school year for $179,516,780 and a tax levy increase of 3.15%, be it further resolved that the proposed district budget for the 17-18 school year shall be placed on the ballot as Proposition Number 1 for the May 16, 2017 budget vote. I need a motion. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Mrs. Blumenau. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Congratulations. We have a budget. A reminder to the voting public that we'll also have a second proposition this year. Um, that is uh, to allow the Board of Education to allot a capital reserve fund to be set aside anything up to $20 million over the next how many years? 20 years. So that doesn't mean we're putting $20 million aside right away. It just means it allows us over the next 20 years to begin putting money aside for anticipation of future capital projects such as Twin Towers Middle School and Carter Elementary. Um, and in addition to that, the third item on the vote will be for three board seats um, for this year. Uh, moving on to action items, I need approval for financial memorandum number 22. So moved. moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Pastor Williams. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. I need approval for special services memorandum number 20. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Pastor Williams. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. I need approval for the election of Martha Bogart to the Orange Ulster Board of Cooperative Educational Services. So moved. Moved by Mr. W uh, Mr. Perino. Second. Seconded by Mr. McElroy. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. I need approval for the election of Lawrence Berger to the Orange Ulster Board of Cooperative Educational Services. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perino. Seconded by Mrs. Blumenau. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. 
I need approval for the adoption of a resolution for Orange Ulster Bosey's administrative budget for the 2017-18 school year. I need a motion. Moved by Mrs. Blumenau. Seconded by? Second. Mr. McElroy, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries 7-0. I need, if you bear with me one second while it comes up on my computer. Resolve that the Board of Education upholds the superintendent's decision made at the superintendent's disciplinary hearing regarding student number 0170619 following consideration by the Board of Education of the appeal made by the parent guardian. I need a motion. Moved by Mrs. Blumenau, seconded by Pastor Williams. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Moving on to committee reports. I'm on a roll, so don't stop me, anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> audit, Mr. Bison. Thank you. Our audit committee meeting is this Tuesday at 5 o'clock. That's April 24th, 5 o'clock at the Board of Ed building. Um, and again, anyone is welcome to attend beside our committee. So, you got that date, Mrs. Blue? <laughs> Very funny. And uh, Ms. Tobiasen, I have somebody who gave me their card is interested in serving on the audit committee. Oh. So, if you want to perhaps send them an email and tell them you're the chair okay. and would like to speak to them about it. Um, and also oh. a reminder that um, the school district did receive notification that it will, our state controller is coming, correct, to audit the school district. When was the last audit we had from the state? It's been a while. Okay. So we back luck. up a second before you gave me the card. Sure. Are you finished with? Yes. Um, the address on here, is this the address of... I assume this person is a Middletown resident. Yes, they are. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The address is Good question, their but office. The, yeah, that's their office where they're working. But they are a Middletown um, person. Buildings and grounds, Pastor Williams. Uh, no real report. Uh, we did. We did as. You want to give me the fake them. one then? Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, I can do that. Uh, actually. actually. <laughs> Hey, whatever. Listen, it is what it is. Uh, uh, we actually, as, as you all are aware, we we had we went on a, a tour of the new construction over at the um, at the high school, and uh, very impressive uh, as things are moving along. But uh, I've endeavored not to bother uh, Mr. Scott too much because I know he's been real busy. He's been real busy, and so uh, I'm being very cognizant and uh, of his time and 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 what he's doing. So, uh, but. We're all aware of everything that's transpiring as we're coming down through the through the uh, process of this project. So uh, that's my fake report for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to the real report next time. <laughs> uh, change orders, Mr. McElroy. Whenever we don't hear from you on this, this is it's a good thing, you realize. Yeah, well, th uh, nothing to report. <laughs> Keep that going. Thank you. Uh, anything on diversity, Pastor Williams? Um, nothing on fair funding. They didn't. They haven't sent anything to us. Um, IEP reviews, Ms. Perino. Mrs. Clark keeps me going. There we go. Keeps uh, me busy. Local governments. I know we have an interim supervisor, right? Officially, Mrs. Blumenau, we have an interim supervisor. Is Ms. Uh, Councilman Valentin? Okay. So nothing new on that front yet, right? Okay. City of Middletown, Mr. Presenzo. Nothing. Um, Orange County School Boards, there, um, they are not having an April meeting. They'll have a May meeting, so there's no report there. I know the nominating committee is um, will be meeting shortly to discuss. We might have some news on that front next month. New York State School Boards, Mrs. Blumenau, anything? Were we still working on trying to do a program for this year's conference? Yes, we did. We all. Um, we only got one. 
We only got one. We only got one. You got one in, though? One. We, we were only a, approved for one. Be, we sent, I think, six in, and they only approved one. Okay. No. Maybe two. You want to try again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, definitely as the new, when you guys um, do reorganization for the new school year, start to drum that up so to see how many members will go up to the conference because it's up in Buffalo. No, 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 no. no. Oh, no, Lake, uh, Lake Placid. Lake Placid. Lake Placid. Lake Placid. So you're in wanting October. to go up there, you better get some rooms real fast. Yes. There's not Otherwise, a lot of hotels. you're going to have to lease tents. You need a passport? <laughs> you got raccoon cats. With this administration, maybe. <laughs> I think that we should do that, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I would book them right after, like, have that be an active discussion at reorg. Like, book them now. Yeah, I would book them now. But solidify who's going at reorg. Okay. Um. Anything, Mr. McElroy? Am I following the rules of engagement? It's cold up there. Yep, so far, it's been smooth sailing. <laughs> uh, policy, uh, Dr. Eastwood, uh, do we have any more policies coming down the pike? Yes. Okay, good. And then if we can, we're, we're starting on that next section, I believe, 700, 7,000 or 700? Yes. Now that this is out of the way, we'll be able to okay. give it out. Because I think we have two big ones left, right? Mrs. Clark, to get completed before the school year. Yes. Before the school year ends. Um, safety and security, Mr. Perino. We're good. We're good, and nothing on uh, Teacher Center. Anything for roundtable, Mr. McElroy? No. Nope. I'll take two seconds to go around. Late yeah, we do. We have a late exec. Five minutes. For five minutes. Do we have to come out for a vote for that or no? Yes. Um, what? Yeah, for that. Mr. Perino? Fine. Pastor Williams? Just happy to, happy that budget season. 835. Hey. Uh, Mrs. Blumenau? Ditto. Well Mr. done. Presenza. Well done, everybody. Okay. Yeah. And remember that Mr. Estrada, we started at 7 today, right? Hour and a half. Presentation and the budget and recognitions. <laughs> I will make one adjustment. Um, okay. All right. I will say this, only four more four more meetings left, two in May, two in June. Um, at this time, the, I need a motion to adjourn into executive session to discuss uh, dis disciplinary of, of employee, so personnel. We may be coming out to a public vote um, thereafter, so I will need everyone else, including our great Gertech folks. Let's give them a nice round of applause. We're going to... You only get recognized when something goes wrong, <laughs> but not tonight. So I need a motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Moved by Mr. Crescenzo, seconded by Mr. Bl Mrs. Blumenau. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion Aye. carries 7-0. We'll see you shortly. Thank you. session we've made motions to come back into public session and at this time I need a motion uh, for the following resolution be it resolved that employee number 5637 shall be suspended without pay during the pendency of a section 75 civil service law proceeding against said employee I need a motion moved by Mrs. Blumenau seconded by Mr. Crescenzo any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed Motion carries 7-0. I need a motion to officially adjourn our meeting. So moved. Moved by Mr. Perino, seconded by Mr. Crescenzo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Have a nice evening. We'll see you back on May 4th. You know Thank you.